I'd like to take this time to read an email to you that I received from somebody. This email is uh, really uh, thought invoking and it brings me to the point where I feel, I feel like I needed to do a video about this. And this has to do with living remotely here in, in Ecuador, you know, going out and buying a piece of property away from the city building a house or buying a house that's remotely located. And as soon as I come back, I'm going to read this email, tell you, and then I'm going to tell you some stories and then my thoughts. Be right back. Hey. Hello there. So I got this email from Ken, I'll say Ken D. I won't give his last name, obviously. Here it goes, it's, it's uh, cover up his name here, but here, it's this long, so sit back and relax, it's gonna take me a minute to read this, but it, it'll be worth it, okay? I, I believe it will, okay? If you're not interested, move on, all right? So anyway, hi, hi again, Don. You got me revved up with recollections today when you touched on Ecuador houses versus apartments. I did a video just recently about this. I've lived in every possible type of dwelling in many global places. In Ecuador, I lived in hotels at first. Once I was standing with a real estate agent in an apartment, I was considering on a high floor of a building in Quito, and then he put in parentheses, that I knew was right on a major geologic fault. And as we looked at the view over the city and across to the volcano mountain in the background, Ruku, Ruku Pachincha, she mentioned, you probably wouldn't be interested, but I have a house to rent over there up on the mountain above the forest. Did you ever get my attention? Did that ever get my attention? It was a thousand feet above Quito and the private access trail was through an, a eucalyptus forest. Beyond was nothing but the mountain, and the nearest neighbor was a half a kilometer down a private trail, a sister of the owner, and their family owned the large hacienda on the mountain. The house yard was walled in. A deep gully served as a blocker on the side opposite my half kilometer distant neighbor. I rented it right away, he said. For me, that isolated, super scenic, natural setting was perfect, and I could get to my office in Quito in 15 minutes. The place was very tastefully built in a beautiful, classic, old Spanish style as their honeymoon home, but the wife preferred to live in the city. They had antique artwork inside, statues and paintings. But, and he put but in capital letters, the owner gave me a couple of their German Shepherd dogs to have there. He had a local guy who worked as a handyman who was occasionally around, and he arranged a living maid they knew and trusted. I never had a problem with robbers there. Okay, you got that, folks? I never had a problem with robbers there. But was told that someone came around once, though nothing happened. Maybe the dogs were a deterrent. He gave me a saddle to use, for too, for riding his polo horses he turned loose on the mountain. Plus, they gave me a key to the lock on a gate so I could drive up to the antennas on Pachenza any time. I did that often, and from there, went hiking up the mountain. What a deal. I think your preference for a secure location is wise. He put that in blue letters. It's not the same place that I knew. If I were living there now, I'd, much, I'd be much more cautious about living in an isolated setting. And, and then in parentheses, he said, and maybe I should have been then. Some of the places I've lived south, some of the places with land south of Cuenca or around Loja or Vilcabamba seem real nice and are quite appealing, but I'd be concerned about security and would really closely assess that aspect if I considered going there. But I've never ever liked living in any shared walled situation. But that house on the mountain above the forest was my all time favorite place and setting of all others I lived in anywhere until the government plopped an electric transmission tower right in front of the window, looking down 
upon the city where I'd watch big airliners fly below me when landing at the old airport in the city. They'd have sold me the place. They, they'd have sold the place to me then, but after that tower went up, I was not interested. Brief statements can trigger a chain of thoughts. Perhaps at least you found these entertaining. Cheers, Ken. So you might be wondering, well, what's the point here, Don? The, the point is security. There's theories abound about security here in Ecuador. I've heard horror stories about people living in remote areas here in Ecuador and having issues with security. Not so much around the coast here, but more inland and more up in the Andes, particularly, believe it or not, Vilcabamba. I heard of a story just recently about a couple in their 80s that went to dinner one night in Vilcabamba. And when they came back, there were five indigenous guys. They were reported as being indigenous people waiting for them. And they robbed them. They beat them. They tied them up. And they left them for dead. It was, I was told that it took 14 hours before anybody discovered these guys, this couple. They were laying on the floor in their house alive. But then I heard that the gentleman uh, succumbed to the injuries that he received from being beaten and from being left on the floor. It's a sad story. Uh, you know, you hear, you talk to enough people here and you, you hear about stories like this. I've also heard, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've heard this and I've heard it more than once. So it makes me uh, be very cautious and, and it makes me err on the side of caution and think, well, maybe it's true, you know, but I've been told that in some of the regions around Ecuador, some of the indigenous people don't like non-indigenous people. They don't like people coming there and invading their territory, so to speak, being on their land. This is their land, they believe. They, they you know, I guess they have a right to feel that way. I don't, it's, I have no right to say either way, but I'm just telling you what I've been told. So if you think about coming here, think really, really hard and talk to lots of local people. If you want to come here and you want to move to Vilcabamba and you want to buy some land out in the country and build a house on it or buy somebody else's property, before you make that deal with that realtor or the homeowner, talk, talk ask questions, ask people around the city and find out, you know, what, what do you think? Ask the locals, what do you think? Would you live out there or not? Me personally, I don't think I would, but I felt the same way in the United States. I, I thought in the United States, there were several times I've had some opportunities. Well, actually, when I had my business in the 80s, I lived on a small 12-acre spread outside Georgetown, Texas, and I was very much remote. And out there, and I mean, in the middle of the night, it was like being in the middle of nowhere. And... I remember the darkest that I've ever seen it was when the power went off out there one night and I saw no lighting whatsoever except from what came from this, the night sky, the stars, the, the Milky Way. So it was very remote and there were many times where even as a young man, I was a little scared, a little uneasy about being there. So I wouldn't do that here either. I wouldn't live in a remote location here. I want to be in the city or in the, the, small, the town and be in a guarded, gated community. I, and I'm 71 years old. We'll be 71 next week. And, you know, I want that, that security blanket around me. So I, I'm just t doing this video to provide food for thought. Take it however you want to, folks. So you can say, ah, I'm Big deal, you know. I can share other stories with you. 
that I've heard from other people talking about things that have happened to people that live in remote locations. And there are a lot of people here. That, well, let me rephrase that. There are people here that will tell you, don't do it, especially as an expat. So just something to think about, okay? Thanks a lot. See you on the next one. Ciao, ciao. After I'm done with the dishes, I'm probably gonna go wash your car. Are you okay? You need me to make you a sandwich? Get you something to drink? No? Okay.